I'm sorry, Mrs. Michaels. He didn't have a thing worth listening to. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, yes, it's nothing, really. A little too much excitement, that's all. If I thought that you were really ill, Mrs. Michaels, I'd have to ask that you think about going back east. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, I guess you think I'm a stubborn, unreasonable woman. No, that isn't true. It's all right, I understand. I just wish I could make you understand my side of it. Most women need a, a man's shoulder to cry upon sometimes. I know you're not feeling well. I'd feel a lot better if I could tell you a few things. This is a window, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Just talking about it sometimes helps. I don't want you to think I'm trying to excuse myself. I was barely 16 when I was married to a man I scarcely knew. A match arranged by our families. I was 17 when Jimmy came. I thought having the baby would, would change things for us, bring us closer together. But it didn't. Then I met another man. You don't have to go on. Please, Mr. Kelly. I want to finish. I ran away with this man. I left my husband and my son. The man I ran away with left me after the accident that blinded me. I went back home, but it was too late. My husband was gone, and he had taken Jimmy with him. My father was a very kind and understanding man. Up until the very day he died, he kept on trying to help me to find my son. But we never did. And suddenly, I heard from Mr. Nash. He ought to be horsewhipped for leading you on when he had nothing to offer. All he wants is whatever money he can get out of you. I know the chance I'm taking, Mr. Kelly. But it's the only hope I've had in all these years. Even if Mr. Nash is a chief, Gives me something to hope for, something to live for. That's why I've got to go on looking and hoping and living. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> 